Tonight, we have a great guest for you. As Cherie Ariano is an energy worker, star seed, creator of a unique healing tools, and the host of the Ascension Sessions, which you can find on YouTube. After 15 years working as a creative director at Conscious Creative, a creative agency she founded, she felt a calling to serve as a healer and to help people awaken to their best selves. In 2017, she kicked off the Ascension Sessions, a series of interviews with spiritual leaders sharing their wisdom on the topic of Ascension and consciousness, which of course can be found on her YouTube channel, which we highly get into. And we're going to get into all these subjects tonight. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Sheree Ariano, thank you so much for coming on Spaced Out Radio tonight. How are you? I'm great, Dave. Thank you so much for having me on the show again. I know. To be here. Now, the last time we tried to have you on the show, I butchered it because we were in the middle of redoing our entire studio here, trying to upgrade the sound system, and it just was not working. And unfortunately, our interview ended up being a victim of that. But I'm glad to have you back here, and I told you we'd get you back ASAP, and and I'm glad we have because I think you're one of the special people in this field that really truly is doing it for the right reasons and the right energy. So thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for saying that. That means a lot to me. And thanks again for having me on the show again. And even though it was a shorter episode that night, we still had fun. <laughs> well, we're going to keep keep it going here. We're going to make it a long version of the show tonight. Tell everybody about you and how you got into this. What got you into finding about your own spirituality? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, I've always kind of walked the line of, um, you know, being a spiritual person and kind of investigating my own spirituality, if you will. But I always kind of dabbled in it and really never went full in with two feet. Um, in the late 90s, I started doing yoga like four days a week and I was really into it. I was real, I was like a yogini and um, my teacher asked me if I wanted to become a teacher. And at that time, I, I didn't feel called to do that. But I ended up going to India and spending like four months on this amazing journey. And we actually went to India, Sri Lanka, uh, Egypt, and Nepal during that trip. And it was really um, kind of like an activation. I feel like it really unlocked something inside of me. And, um, you know, the outside of that trip, I learned, you know, more about spirituality because I actually went there during the Mahakumbha Mela, which is the the world's largest um, spiritual festival in the world, like millions of people descend upon this five kilometer square mela and there's all these like gurus and sadhus and spiritual beings that are you know seeking more enlightenment i guess if you will and um you know it it definitely unlocked something in me and mark my gorgeous husband who you mentioned he is gorgeous (laughs) he really is also (laughs) He wasn't supposed to come on that trip. And three weeks into the trip, my dog died. And this dog was like my soulmate at the time. He was like, you know, I had had him for nine years. And um, he was in the care of uh, Mark's mom. And unfortunately, the dog ran away and got hit by a car. And Mark knew that I would be devastated and he couldn't tell me in person. So, I mean, he couldn't tell me over the phone. And India is like the most chaotic place in the world. And like there were no, you know, we didn't have cell phones. Email was like um, sketchy. You had to go to a cafe and, you know, hope that they had good Internet that day. And so he decided to fly to India to tell me this news in person. And he didn't tell me for like a month. <laughs> he was like holding it in and holding it in because he didn't want to um, upset me, I guess. And I know this is kind of a long segue, but it's an interesting story. So I'll share it anyways. Um, so after traveling with him for <clears throat> about six weeks, 
we realized that if we could travel together in the most chaotic place in the world and still want to be together, that it was meant to be. So out of that trip came my husband, which was amazing. And also um, the birth of a company that we started together called Conscious Creative. Um, and so we started a, a green or eco creative agency offering graphic design and video services for about uh, 20 years now. And, you know, a lot of people were in love with the name. Conscious Creative is such a great name. What do you guys do? And so I was always like, I had one foot in the spiritual community and one foot in the green and eco community. And it wasn't until about 2013 that I really started um, diving more deeply into my own spirituality and consciousness and, you know, understanding what intuition is and how to um, discover and and allow your own intuition to unfold and to start, uh, you know, really like checking in with your body and your guides and your energetic fields and like really starting to harness the power that we all have as humans. And, um, and so the reason I shared that whole big India story with you is because I feel like that was kind of like the beginning of the unlocking. And then in around, around 2013, 2014, I had a friend who was a spiritual teacher and, she told me that she had an implant, right? And like an alien implant. And I was like, what? You know, I was completely blown away because I was not into the um, UFO community or contact community or experiencer community in any way. And, you know, she was a really good friend of mine and I believed her, but, you know, I was kind of like, in shock, right? So I went down this long rabbit hole. I went down the rabbit hole of researching um, life on other planets, other star nations, uh, you know, extraterrestrial crafts, like the whole nine yards. So this was in 2013. And I would say that that was really the catalyst for my awakening. Because once I realized that there is life on other planets, like it was like pff, the floodgates opened and like everything came online. So that's my really long answer to your question. <laughs> what changed about you from the person before you went to India to find your own spiritual path compared to who you are now? What did you learn about yourself? From the India trip? Or just like, in search for your own spiritual peace. Hmm. Well, I could say that, you know, the Sharia of back then was very, um, like 3d, if you will, I can't think of the word right now, but you know, things were kind of like more at face value, more at, um, what you see, you know, like that saying that says like, um, don't believe it until you see it. Or, you know, I don't believe it until I see it with my own eyes. Like that's a very common saying. And now it's like the opposite is true for me. And, um, now I can like, you know, feel things and understand things that I can't see with my own eyes, but there's like a difference in my inner knowing of um, what may be true, what may be, what reality really is. Um, I don't believe that half of the stuff that we're being fed as reality is reality. I think there's a lot of um, control mechanisms in place and, uh, and we have to learn how to see beyond the veil to and start to find out what our own truths are. Because I think it's different for everybody. Because the reality that we um, believe is the reality that we create. For you, as you decided to go on this spiritual path, 
how did you know it was the right path for you? Like what, what went on in your own mind, your own body, your own soul to get you where you are today? Well, you know, I came from a lot of, uh, suffering. I had a very unique childhood. (laughs) Uh, there was a lot of pain involved and, um, mostly emotional pain. And, um, I think that I was seeking healing originally, you know, which is probably why I, uh, delved into yoga because yoga offers a lot of healing because we store a lot of pain in our muscles and our muscle memory. And so when we do yoga and we stretch the muscles and we release um, we act, we're actually releasing the trauma that's stored in those muscles in the body. And so I just remember, you know, even to this day, anytime I get on a yoga mat and I start doing yoga, it's like I get this huge wave, like sigh of relief. It's like, okay, I'm here to honor myself, you know, and when you're not, when you don't feel honored or seen or heard by others and you can stop and breathe deeply and honor yourself, it's a really healing feeling. You know, I grew up in the era where I was told to be um, seen and not heard. You know, kids were not, our voices were not valued. Oh, yeah. We were, you know. <laughs> did, did, did you get the... People are staring at you. People are watching. <laughs> no. That that was my mother's famous line. Like if we were in a restaurant or something, that was my mom's famous yeah. line. Stop it. People are watching. Then you'd look around and there'd be like nobody watching. Where, mom? Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> no, I didn't get that one. I can't even remember going to restaurants very often. We did a few times, but... Um, it was definitely like be seen and not heard, you know, and just, you know, because my, my household was so crazy. I had, um, three older siblings who were nine and 11 years older than me. And so, you know, my sister was kind of like my babysitter until the age of five and they would always like kind of usher me you know, outside or into this room or like they always kept me out of harm's way in a way. I was, I was the baby and I was always taken care of that way. So me too. Oh yeah, that's right. I think we talked about that before. Worst p- position. Have, how many? Uh, how well, many my, siblings? my sisters are 10 and seven years older than me. Oh wow. So yeah, we're similar in that way. Yeah. And I hated it because I was excluded from everything. You just sit over there. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. Oh, right. you're bringing up yeah. childhood trauma now. Thanks. We're going to have to do some yoga. I, I, I feel like I need to lie on a couch and speak to you now. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good to talk about these things because as we talk about them, you know, it helps to release them, I believe, as well. Mm-hmm. But if you can, if you can also, you know get into the body and do movement it's it's also really helpful there's a lot of different ways you know to work through it obviously well you know what uh we're we're gonna change subjects here because i'm gonna get pissed (laughs) off i was always excluded why do i have to be excluded i'm an old man now i'm an old man yeah Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm blaming you for my n- mental breakdown tonight. Thank you so much. Sheree <laughs> Ariano is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Sheree, as you decided to go down this path to find yourself and to find out who you were and what your life's meaning was and what you were supposed to be doing, how much peace came across you when you finally made that decision? Because Change is hard for a lot of people. Change is difficult, whether it's diet, whether it's hairstyle, or even clothing style. But when you change your entire outlook on life to start following a new path, that is very difficult for a lot of people to be able to look themselves in the mirror and say, I'm doing the right thing for me. Because so much in this time of life, we are living for everyone else but ourselves. Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what came to mind immediately was that it's difficult for us to change because of those around us. 
um, because we fear the criticism, we fear the second guessing that comes from those closest to us, you know, our, our siblings, our parents, our in-laws or whatever, um, you know, it's been, it's like saying, you know, I'm a baseball player and then the next day you're, you know, you're a dry cleaner, like you own a dry cleaner. It's, it's such a different field. I mean, they're both cre creative fields, you know, cause I came from photography and graphic design and now I'm doing uh, energy healing and creating, you know, jewelry and wonderful essential oils. They're still in the creative realm, but it is very different. And I think that um, it's been difficult for some of my siblings to understand what the heck I'm doing because it's just, a, it, it's like a totally different world. It's a different language and they don't really fully understand it. So, um, I would say that's the biggest obstacle but for me personally, like I love it. I'm so excited to be on my path because from 2012 to, I would say about 2018, so what is that? Six years. I was just like, what is my path? What is my soul's purpose? What is my life's mission? I knew that I had fulfilled the first one and that there, I had reached like a fork in the road and I was supposed to go on this other path and serve humanity in a bigger way. And I couldn't, I didn't know what it was, but I had this like really strong drive to find out. And so that drove me, you know, for the past six to seven years of just like being on this continual search um, for what I wanted to do next. And I remember that feeling of just like not knowing and it was kind of driving me crazy. And I had to like find calm and find patience within myself and trust that it would all be revealed in divine timing. And so, you know, that's been a huge lesson in this process is trusting the universe, trusting my guides, trusting divine timing. Um, because, you know, when I ran my creative agency, I ran it with a lot of uh, masculine energy. The divine masculine is all about um, make a list, set your goals, check off your list, go, go, go. You know, you have these like objectives and you're always like doing and making things happen. And um, when we run our energy in the divine feminine, it's totally the opposite. It's like, it's about taking a step back and allowing and trusting in the universe and trusting in divine timing and, um, you know, still setting your intentions and still working on your goals, but I guess in a less aggressive way and just, it's more like allowing things to unfold. And so that's been a huge lesson for me and a huge challenge because that was a place where I really had to change myself, you know, and I still have days where I fall back into that masculine thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to work on my website and I got to make oils and I got to do this healing session and I got to take care of my kids and, I, you know, like all these things. And I have to remind myself to just breathe and, and that it's okay if I don't get everything done today, you know, like it's all going to unfold in a divine plan. So I've had to like really trust in things that I can't see with my own eyes, you know, just an inner knowing that there is something called divine timing and that, you know, there's a bigger plan and everything's going to work out fine. Can you define divine timing for me? We've got about three minutes before we go to break at the bottom of the hour. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, in society, like, we've been taught to arrive to work on time or school on time or, you know, even if it's just a dinner date or whatever, like, time is such a huge part of society and our, our collective and the way we think. And, you know, in this awakening, like, I also learned that time is just an illusion. It's a man-made thing, right? And there's also something called divine timing, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of like the universe is, is working and there's all these wheels behind the scene, kind of like the wheels of a clock. And, you know, um, 
if you arrive at a, a particular place, maybe too early or too late, you might miss something that was supposed to um, present itself to you or an experience that you were supposed to witness. And so sometimes I feel like we get hung up in like, don't be late or don't be early or whatever. Like, um, it would be great if we could all move into more of a space of divine timing. Now, obviously, that's not going to fly with the business world. But, um, you know, I on a personal level, I feel like um, people would be a little kinder to themselves and they would um, you know, cause sometimes we beat ourselves up if we're late or whatever, you know, or we get stressed to our kids when we're trying to get them ready for school. And, you know, we're like, come on, hurry up, hurry up, we're late. And there's so much stress in that energy. And if we can just like let that go sometimes and just, um, believe in divine timing, things will still flow and everything will be okay. So most of the times when I stress about time, in the end, everything's always okay. So um, I don't know if I answered your question, but hopefully that did. Well, I think you did a great job. But, you know, as we look at divine timing and how it works out, does that include luck? Miracles? Hmm. Well, you know, I. it's funny because some people say, I don't, I don't believe in luck. And, you know, I guess it's just a definition. You know, I call it more like fate. Um, I personally believe that we all have these guides, right? Like angels that are like always around us and they know they're like orchestrators behind the scenes and they know kind of like what's going to happen in the future. So sometimes they will orchestrate things to make it so that, you know, you get on the same train as this woman you're supposed to meet at five o'clock or whatever, you know, and you guys catch eyes and then you exchange phone numbers and, and then you talk about it at your first day and you realize that you weren't even supposed to be on that train because whatever, whatever. And you talk about it and it's like, oh, what a coincidence, you know, and I think that it's more like a divine plan. Cherie Ariano is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We're going to find out more about this divine stuff. Let's get our Zan and Chi on with Cherie right after this on Spaced Out Radio. Hypnotic. My voice is killing me right now. I've oh, lit- no, I have no. literally been on the radio now for five and a half hours. Really? How come? Did I, you do some pre-recorded thing? I had uh, one pre-record right before this with UFO Garage. Uh, I had... Um, oh, I had... Uh, um, an interview with blue line Bigfoot before that one. And I thought that one I had, I'd screwed up my scheduling because I thought that I was supposed to go on with blue line Bigfoot like this morning at around 11, my time, 12, my time. And then at, when I got into my studio this morning, I checked the email and it was like four o'clock and I'm like, Oh damn. Okay. And, um, so I did that interview Got off the air with them, literally wolfed down dinner in like seven minutes, and <laughs> oh, ran goodness. back downstairs to my computer to go on with UFO Garage for two hours, and now I'm on here. So my voice oh, my is goodness. my voice is a little rough. So feel free to talk. So you should get your oils and rub some oils on your throat. Yes. By the way, audience, I got a beautiful care package from Cherie. I got a just a charming, beautiful bracelet. Not going to lie. This thing is awesome. Now, what kind of stones are these again? Lemon? <laughs> Obsidian. Obsidian. Wait, you're not holding it up to the camera, are um, you? Oh, no, the, no, I got you two, have cameras. two cameras. Oh, oh so this is your camera. <laughs> so this it's is the YouTube. Obsidian. Can you hold it in front of my camera for a second? It's um, obsidian, gold obsidian, sandalwood beads and hematite, and one black lava bead on there for you to put your oils on. Um, yeah. Oh, that's where the oils go. Yeah. Okay. They go on the lava bead and the wooden bead. Okay, hold on. 
I gotta try this out because I got some some really cool oil stuff here that has like a wood top. Bamboo. Bamboo. I thought it was. Yeah, shake it. Shake it first. Okay. Oh, I didn't know there was a. Oh, yay. <laughs> so I feel like a kid black... right here. I feel like you... <laughs> there's black obsidian in the bottle, and in the rollerball itself is also black obsidian. Are you kidding me? I didn't know that. Yeah. Ooh -wee. And, and so, for everyone in the YouTube audience, black obsidian is a protection stone. It's also great for grounding, but mostly for protection. So then I just rub um, rub this on the on the lava part. Yeah, you rub it on the lava, and you can also rub it on the wooden beads. Oh. And so then it acts like a diffuser, and you get to smell it all day. Oh, it, it lasts for two days. Honestly, it smells great. And then you can rub it on your throat chakra, Dave, and heal your vocal cords because right. it's got frankincense let's, in it, which is like an amazing oh, healer. Look at Dave go. Go up and down. Up and down. Look at Dave throat. go there, people. <laughs> oh, I feel like I, I'm having... Look at me go. Oh, oh, the power of this. It actually smells really good. It smells really, really good. Thank you. Do you want to know what's in it? Yes. Do we have time? Um, uh, we got a few minutes here. Okay. Hang on, I'll tell you in a sec. Oh, oh, geez, I forgot to put my plastic back on. Oh, that's just for, like, shipping and if you ever travel with it. I know, but you see, I'm also clumsy. So, it uh, won't leak unless you, you know, you, like, go on a plane and there's pressure change or you're driving over the mountains or, you know, yeah. if you leave it on its side for weeks. Yeah. Uh, um, let's oh. see. It's got wild orange, uh -huh. juniper berry, uh -huh. sandalwood, and frankincense. Oh, and it comes with a travel plug too. Yes. Very yeah, cool. Yeah. So you can you can put that in the cap when you travel, and that will also work. Or you can use the saran wrap. Okay. Thingy. This is awesome. I appreciate that. You're welcome. I just thought you needed a little protection. So ideally, Dave, um, you would put that on before the show Okay. every night. Well, I got a couple of other gifts today, too. Oh, cool. I have the first official Merle autograph, people. The official <laughs> Merle autograph. Do you even alien, bro? That's what he wrote on the card. Do you even alien, bro? Oh, yeah, I alien. I totally alien. And uh, also, I got another surprise for the next half hour that I got today. Uh -oh. Here we go. Second half hour of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Even you, C. McGee, listening wherever you are on our Spreaker chat. I want to remind you that if you miss portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Cherie Ariano is here from the Ascension Sessions. We highly recommend you go to her YouTube channel, same name, and check out her great, great interviews that she does, including one with me a couple years ago. I think there's a part two that may come out one day. May. I don't know. Will it ever come out? Will it ever see the day of light? <laughs> yes, Dave. We have to do part two. You got to give me that exclusive. I've just been, you know, I've been on kind of hiatus this year, 2021. I've been 
really uh, going within and like it's it's really um, interesting to try to put it into words. But, you know, as you know, when you go on the air, you put a lot of your energy out into the oh, world. Yeah. And I just have been feeling like I need to put it in into me like into myself so it's been difficult to want to put my energy out there but i know it's coming like i can feel it it's bubbling but i've just taken a little break to that may be gas just just so you know if it's bubbling and gurgling (laughs) that may be gas not gurgling (laughs) okay you you never know you never know but you know what i i'm gonna say this we kind of talked about it over the break but i'm gonna say this publicly you sent me a beautiful beautiful bracelet and care package from San Francisco all the way to parts unknown British Columbia. It included this this wonderful bracelet that you made that I'm wearing now. And I, I'm going to promise you that I'm not going to take this off. Honestly, I, it feels Aww. really, really comfortable on there. And usually things bug my wrists and, uh-huh. and because like I love wearing watches, but I don't, I have a beautiful watch collection and I barely wear watches because it just bugs my wrists, but this mm-hmm. feels very comfortable and very, very comforting. And I'm going to continue to do that. So, and you sent me some, uh, some healing oil with some yes. frankincense and everything in there. And you sent me a beautiful postcard. And I want to say thank you for that. And, you know, for our listeners out there who might be interested in, in learning more about the products that you are creating out of your home, everything I'm going to assume there's no chemicals. It's all natural. It's all mm-hmm. about you know getting in touch with Mother Nature and her beautiful products. Where could people find this? Thanks for saying that. Yeah, it's all available on my website, shereariano.com. Uh, and my name, both of my names are hard to spell. C H E R I A R E L L A N O dot com. And um, yes, it's all natural. So I make these um, elixirs for emotional healing. I have a line for physical healing and a line for chakra balancing. And the one I sent you, Dave, is from the emotional healing line. It's called I Am Protected. And it has wild orange, frankincense juniper and sandalwood in it as as well as black obsidian beads um, in the bottle and in the roller ball itself so when you roll it on your skin you get the direct contact with the obsidian and i sent you those because it's for protection as well as the bracelet which also has black obsidian and hematite and um, sandalwood beads so if you roll that right onto your beautiful bracelet. You can smell, you can just smell your wrist and get a hit of that amazing smell anytime you need it. Whenever you want to feel grounded or just an extra bit of protection, it's also uplifting and sandalwood and frankincense are amazing for the skin. They're, frankincense is like my desert island oil. So if I was ever stranded, just I take frankincense with me because it has so many uses. And um, all of the oils I use are doTERRA brand, which is like one of the highest quality oils on the market. And then as a carrier oil, I just use pure coconut oil. So um, they're all very pure, no chemicals, (laughs) the highest quality oils like you mentioned. And um, they were designed... um, as healing tools to kind of support the energetic healing work that I do. How do you know this stuff works? How do you know that when you're playing with all of these natural oils, chemicals, I'm going to use the word chemicals, even though I don't mean it that way, um, Mm -hmm. because I don't know how else to put it to be blunt, but how do you, how do you know this stuff works rather than is not just another snake oil? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, doTERRA in particular um, has scientists on staff and um, all of the oils that they make and produce have been studied scientifically. And you can go on there and learn about any oil and they have like tons of research available to anyone to read about, you know, why is peppermint a mood uplifter? 
why does peppermint calm the nervous system? You know, there's a lot of like research that's been done behind these oils. Um, you know, and then personally, when I started making them, it was really just going to be a hobby. And I gave them to my friends and family and I said, Hey, you know, smell these oils and let me know if they smell good or how they make you feel. And, you know, what are your thoughts? And everybody loved them and everybody was like, Oh my gosh, I want these for my kids, you know, cause I make an oil called, um, I am focused and it helps kids with ADD or people who have a hard time focusing on studying or working or what, whatever it is, the oils in that blend are all aligned to help one focus as well as the um, crystals. And so with the crystals, like, you know, there's a woman named Judy Hall and there's tons of other people who study crystals and they can actually communicate with the crystals and they, um, have been studied for thousands of years and they know like what the properties of each crystal does. So I believe them. I don't have time to do that research myself, but I, um, you know, know which oils do what and which crystals do what. And I align them together to, um, focus on whatever it is, feeling centered, feeling more harmony, feeling more confident or focused, or whatever. And the, the chakra balancing line, uh, there's one, there's seven oils and each one is designed to help balance and harmonize each of your seven chakras. For a lot of people who don't understand the chakras, including myself, who's heard it about 172 times on this show. <laughs> All right. Explain to us what the chakras are, what's their purpose and why should we buy into it? Well, should is never a word that I like to use, but <laughs> if you're open to believing that, you know, we're all energetic beings, like we're all 90% energy, maybe 99% energy and water, and we're all electric electrical conduits, like there's a ton of electricity running through our bodies. And um, we all have what's called an energetic field or a toroidal field. And there are certain uh, energy points or energy centers that go up the body, starting at the root, the tailbone area. That's the root chakra. And then there's sacral solar plexus, which is near the belly, the heart chakra above the heart. There's the high heart above that. It's between the heart and the throat. And then the throat, third eye and crown. And then there's even a couple like above your head and there's one behind your head and there's some in your legs and your feet that help you connect down to the earth's energy. And so each of these chakras represents, um, you know, a certain part of your being, if you will. So the root chakra controls your security and feeling grounded, feeling safe. You know, it's all about like having a roof over your head and money in the bank. It's like that sense of security and feeling safe. And um, your solar plexus, for example, is all about um, your divine will and your purpose and how you manifest in the world and create and so each chakra kind of controls these different areas of our lives, intuition, the ability to speak your truth, um, the ability to love and feel loved and feel compassion. And when these chakras are closed down or out of balance, um, you know, problems start to arise emotionally and they also manifest in your life. So it's ideal to have these chakras in balance. And so I, I created these healing tools to kind of like assist with that. It's a tool to help you focus on that chakra. But really, you're the one doing the work to help bring them into balance. Okay, so how do we tell the seven chakras apart? All right, we know there's one for thinking and one for breathing and one for the soul and one for your gluteus maximus, one for your pinky toe and, and all of this. You know, how do we tell them apart? Well, I mean, 
you mean like feeling into them or learning about them? For me personally, I just, I studied them and I learned about them. And, you know, these have been studied going back to the Vedic times, like to ancient India. And um, there are people around today who can see your energy field. Um, They can see your light body basically with their eyes and, and so if you study the chakras, you can learn about each one and what, what control center they are. So um, it's, it's pretty intuitive. The heart chakra is about love and romance and compassion for yourself and for others. Uh, the sacral chakra, which is over the womb, is about creativity and fertility and sexual desires and passion and that kind of thing. You know, and the third eye is uh, intuition, higher knowing, being able to uh, go more deeply into a meditation or astral dreaming or that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 really easily available information out there. For a lot of people who are listening to this, they're more mainstream. They're more about, you know therapies whether it's physical therapy massage therapy hydrotherapy why buy into this part of taking care of yourself when there's so much else out there that kind of answers Mm -hmm. the mainstream answers rather than you know this being thought of as a i don't i don't want to use the word like a a faux healing practice because i don't think it is you know, mm-hmm. uh, and and I'm a firm believer. Like for instance, even on my microphone, I I have a a solenite uh, bracelet wrapped around mm-hmm. my microphone because it it helps with depression and anxiety. It helps with mm-hmm. creativity, and it helps me calm down. Yeah. So I I kind of believe in that. But for the mm-hmm. people out there who are like, well, you know, I really don't want to get into that that voodoo type of stuff or you know how people always have to try and match (laughs) things up. I'm just trying to be humorous while asking a serious question. How do you uh, break down that boundary? Well, for one, um, what I love about using essential oils or a crystal is that it puts the power in your hands. So you're not going to a doctor or chiropractor or therapist or whatever to heal. You can do it yourself. We all have the ability for self healing And so um, just by grabbing these tools and putting them on your body or smelling them, you immediately start to heal. So um, there's been scientific research done that the olfactory system, which is the sense of smell, is the fastest route to healing through, you know, we've got touch, sight, smell, hearing, right? All the five senses. Well, when you smell an essential oil, the smell goes immediately into your olfactory system and it sends a signal to the brain that says like, oh, okay, we're going to start healing, you know, her thymus gland or whatever it is. And these essential oils are programmed. They have DNA in them. They're um, plant chemicals. They're plant oils. They come directly from the plants and those plants have DNA And we're all connected, right? Like everything is one. So when your olfactory system smells that plant, it kind of already knows what it is you're trying to do because of the, the, the harmony and the unity in all of the DNA that's going around. So what I love about essential oils is that it hits your nose. 30 seconds later, you've got this message to your brain. Your body starts healing itself. It's the fastest way faster than even rubbing it on your skin. So Dave, when you put those oils on, make sure you smell them and take a really deep inhalation because that's the first step of healing. Um, and, And again, I love that it puts the power in your own hands and everybody can try it. There's no harm in it. It's not gonna hurt you. There's no side effects. And if it doesn't work for you, you haven't lost anything. You know, there's no harm done. The other thing, uh, that I wanted to share. Um, I just lost my train of thought, but it was about, um, gosh, 
it'll come back to me. I can't remember what I was going to say, but it answered your question about, you know, why should they use these tools for healing? Is that what they are? Tools? Yeah. In my mind, they're tools. Oh, thank you. You just triggered my memory. So <laughs> the, yes, cha-ching. The first thing, um, or the most important thing is our intentions, right? So our thoughts have power, our words have power, our intentions have power. And when we intend to heal, so Dave, like you just said that that soda light helps you feel calm, it helps you feel creative, it helps you feel grounded. Like you intend to feel those things and you know that that tool is there to assist you. It's almost like a mirror that reflects off and it says, oh, I see that thing. It's a reminder. It reminds you to feel that way. So even if the bracelet's not doing anything for you, it's the intention that you've put into your thoughts, your words, your actions, and even into that crystal because crystals can be programmed. So, um, you know, it's, that's why they're tools because really you're the healer, you're healing yourself. You know, I've had, um, days where I've had a really bad headache and I can lay down with a crystal and some essential oils and I can heal myself without taking aspirin. Um, and I use those tools to assist, but really I'm the one doing the healing and we all have the ability to do that. It's just about, you know, stopping and taking the time to breathe deeply, call in the light, calling your, your team, call in your healing guides and use those tools rather than just popping an ibuprofen, which is, you know, what I did for years. So, <laughs> um, you know, but there's people who can't take ibuprofen or it doesn't work for them or they don't want to mess up their liver or their kidneys or whatever. So, you know, there are these alternatives out there. Yes, peppermint oil is great for headaches. Bomber, you're absolutely right. I use it all the time. So see, he knows what's up. <laughs> well, you know what? And it's one of those things, too, that your body reacts to it. So everybody is different. How do we know if our body is reacting positively or negatively? Um, well... I believe that uh, if your body feels open and expansive and you start to feel good, um, it's a positive thing, right? It's a positive reaction. If you start to feel con contracted and like you're getting smaller, your energy's like shrinking and you maybe start to panic or have anxiety, like then that's not so good. Um, uh, and then on the physical realm, you know, you can always do a spot test and see if you have a skin reaction to any of these oils. Uh, there's certain oils you don't want to wear in the sun, like the citrus family oils, lemon, grapefruit, and lime, and even orange. You don't want to wear those in direct sun um, because they're photosensitive and they can like burn your skin. So, you know, there are some cautions. And um, you always want to do a spot test first and make sure you don't have any skin reactions. Yes, oregano oil. Thank you for mentioning that, Kimberly. Oregano oil is, wow, what a powerful oil. It's an immune system booster and it can knock out like any cold if you take it at the beginning of the cold. But it's a super hot oil, meaning it can burn your lips and your mouth. Um, so you want to always put it in a capsule or take it in a shot glass really fast <laughs> if you're brave. <laughs> but it can burn. It can burn the skin. So be careful. You can always rub it on the soles of your feet and you're totally safe there. All right. As we continue on with Sri Ariana, we have her for... Another couple hours here on the show, well, an hour and a half after <laughs> this. We're two minutes away from break at the top of the hour, Cherie. You know, the way our bodies react is always different. Like, for instance, you know, to put something on a more, you know, localized term, some people are very, very uh, immune to the pain of hot sauce and very mm -hmm. hot, hot sauces, where others, you put a, a little couple grounds of pepper on their food and their mouth is absolutely on fire. I mean, we see mm -hmm. that all the time. So when you are getting into this to learn 
about whether or not the certain um, agents, chemicals, you know, uh, Botox or whatever you're using, I'm teasing here, uh, get in your system. How how do we know what's good for us? How what signs should we look for in our bodies? Well, again, I would definitely, you know, just speaking for my oils, they're all roll on, so none of them are ingestible. They're all designed to go on topically. So there's three ways you can use essential oils. You can use them aromatically, which means smelling them. You put them in a diffuser or on your bracelet. Um, The second way is topically on your skin. And the third way is ingesting them into your body. And um, if you're a sensitive person who kind of gets a rash just by looking at a plant, you know, you always want to do a spot test. And um, there's only certain oils that you want to ingest. And there's only brand certain brands of essential oils you want to ingest. A lot of them are made with chemicals or they're not organic. There may be pesticides on the plants or in the soil. So you always want to um, only ingest the purest uh, oils and make sure that they are designed to be ingested. Um, And then topically, you know, there are certain oils that you want to be careful when you put them in a diffuser, like eucalyptus, for example. Um, You don't want to put it in a diffuser around kids for very long. They can be, they can react to it. Um, They can be really sensitive to it. So you want to like maybe run it for 30 minutes, check the kids, make sure they're okay (laughs) and not having any negative reactions. And then, you know, run it again in another hour or 30 minutes or something like that, you know? So you do have to be careful. There are cautions, but, um, again, like I said, all of my oils are topical only. So, uh, you could just spot test them on your wrist or behind your ear or in your elbow somewhere to make sure you don't have any negative reactions. Beautiful. Great timing is we're about to go to break here at the top of the hour. Sheree Ariano is our guest tonight from Spaced Out Radio. I highly suggest you check out her YouTube channel, The Ascension Sessions. What is ascending? That is something we are going to learn when we come back from the break. How do we ascend our zen, our chi, our personal <laughs> souls with our contracts that we apparently signed before we incarnate on this beautiful planet we call Earth? We'll find out from Cherie Ariano right after this on Spaced Out Radio. All right, my friend, I'm just going to run my puppies outside. I'll be right back, okay? Awesome. We got six minutes. Video app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi, this is Amber Beckrude, and I want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we store all of the SOR show archives for free. And as an added bonus, every two weeks, I'm posting brand new content on Cryptid Tales, where I will get into some of the spookier legends and folklore from around the world and tell the stories that go with them. Find us at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio and check out Cryptid Tales today. Drop a comment and let me know what you want to hear. See you there. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Hey, space travelers, this is John Resig, founder of the Chive and Chive Charities. If you know anything about our website, you know we like to do things a little differently. We're not some faceless organization collecting money for a nebulous cause. Our donor dollars go directly toward life-improving items. Then we give those items directly to an underdog who needs it most. 
To become a donor with Spaced Out Radio's official charity, Chive Charities, just go to chivecharities.org forward slash donate. All right, I am back, I am back, I am back. My dog took a little bit longer than what I thought, so I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Welcome back. Yeah. You've had a long day. Oh, totally. Totally. A uh, big thank you to Brett Lewis for the awesome super chat tonight. Thank you so much for the love and support. Hello, Wagon Bread. Th- th- bread. Th- 11.3. I still don't know what a bread is. I looked it up. Don't get it. Don't get it. I know it's a volume of measurement. Uh, Illinois Sasquatch. How you doing, man? All right. And who else am I missing here? Mm, I think I'm caught up. I think I'm caught up. Yeah. So thank you to all our new subscribers. To our veterans out there listening to this show. And everybody. Everybody. We do like wild eyebrows chuckles. Lunar Tina, good to see you. Thank you for hopping on in. And Cherie will be back with us here in about five seconds. Stay tuned. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Second hour of Spaced Out Radio is now underway. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much 
for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. Hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on TalkStream Live, Revolution Radio, and KPNL. All of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club, Quackle. Quackle is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire, Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on tonight with our good friend Cherie Ariano. She has a great YouTube channel called The Ascension Sessions, which I highly suggest you check on out and hit that subscribe button. Cherie, welcome back. Thanks so much, Dave. Great to be here. Great to have you here as well. What is Ascension? Ascension. Big Big question. So (laughs) um, Ascension, in my opinion, there's a lot of different opinions out there, but um, I think it's the evolution of humanity, to put it simply. Um, It's the process of which our consciousness evolved into a higher uh, state of awareness or a higher version of ourselves. Uh, I feel like the planet is constantly uh, evolving, or I should say the the planet and the people on the planet, even the animals. We're all going through ascension right now. Um, There's a belief that every 26,000 years we go through this, the planet goes through a certain part of the uh, galaxy. And as we're moving into that, area right now we get hit the planet gets hit with certain light codes that are new and different and of a higher frequency and being that we're all energetic beings and light beings and and electrical beings um we're equally affected by these new light codes as well as the planet the animals the plants everything on the planet so um you know a lot of uh it is said that we were going through that 20, 25, it's 25,600 year cycle. And we're right at the end of that loop. So um, that's why there's all this talk about Ascension right now, because we're kind of like, and that's also what the age of Aquarius was all about. It's about moving into that space in the cosmos. Okay. So, how do we have to get there? Like, is it a mental thing that we have to work on? Is it is it something that is strictly spiritual with with a, a shift in our in our soul? How do we do that? Um, I think that the planet is moving uh, to this space in the cosmos. So physically, we're kind of like going whether we like it or not. Um, but spiritually and energetically, I do think that. Uh, this ties in with our consciousness and how, um, how we interact with each other as human beings, you know, how kind we are to our neighbors or the guy on the, the BART train who didn't, you know, move over or, you know, give us a seat or whatever. It's about like being in service to others. It's about being kindness to others. It's about being the best uh, iteration or version of yourself that you can be, um, you know, and right now I feel like it's very challenging. I mean, we're going through some of the hardest, certainly the hardest days of my lifetime, uh, you know, with all of the masks and the vaccines and the vaccine passports and the quarantine and just like everything we've been through, all the financial crisis, uh, you know, just everything that's been thrown at us since 2020 like it felt like we were going up and then it just went and it like all crashed um and i've been scratching my head around why why are we going through this why did it take such a dark turn you know and um at least for me it feels like a dark turn and uh 
you know, my husband, who's very wise, said to me, you know, we've got to go through this hard time right now so that we can get better, so that we can be better. And you kind of need to go through this dark time so that it's like a slap in the face. It's like a wake up call for everybody to be better so we can get better together as a collective. Um, and sometimes, you know, if it doesn't happen in our lifetime, Dave, our children and our children's children will be like, dang, look how they messed up 2020. <laughs> Let's not do that, you know, and hopefully like they'll learn from our mistakes and the future of humanity will be better and better and better and better. And so it's really about evolving into the best uh, versions of ourselves. Now, what is the purpose of this? Because something along this line kind of goes against the grain of what the religious community will will go by, what the agnostic community will go by, the atheist community will go by. It's a really, uh, it's almost like a spiritual crapshoot that is, you know, we're all trying to figure out what's at the end of the tunnel. We all get mm-hmm. there one day. We all know that. And, you know, some believe it'll be ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Some say, well, we're one and done. And others will say that it's part of a collective consciousness that continues on forever with reincarnation. So right. uh, how do we define what is actually right? Well, everyone has their own beliefs and, you know, everyone's uh, entitled to their own beliefs. We can't you know, convince anyone to, to, uh, completely believe the way we do. Um, and you're right, you know, speaking to someone who might be an atheist or might be, um, in some other religion, you know, they're going to be like, Oh, this is all nonsense. Um, but if you're a spiritual being or you're striving to be spiritual or you're religious or whatever, if you believe in, um, life after death or reincarnation or even just that we are pure consciousness beings, not just physical beings. Um, you know, cause I believe that we're like spiritual beings in a physical human body and we're here to experience something, you know, to evolve our own soul's ever evolution. Um, you know, I personally believe that I'm a star seed and I've lived like 69,000 lives on different planets all around the universe and I'm back here to learn something else. And I feel like a baby. Sometimes I feel like a new soul, even though I'm not, you know, we have this like amnesia when we come back because there are certain lessons we're supposed to to learn um, that we haven't gotten it right. Or we're here to do a life's uh, mission. Like we're here to help and serve others. And I believe that I'm here during this time of Ascension to help people understand what Ascension is. So hopefully (laughs) I'll help at least one of your listeners tonight um, understanding this complex topic. Um, But going back to your question, which was like, you know, how do we know if it's true or if we're on the right path or whatever? You know, I, I believe that if human beings are in their highest and purest selves, because we we have a lot of power, right? We have psychic power. We have the ability to move things with our minds, telekinesis. We have a lot of powers that we're not using, that we weren't trained to use as children. Um, We've been kind of programmed to turn them off. And so can you imagine a society where everybody was psychic and everybody could read each other's minds? You know, you couldn't steal from your neighbor. You couldn't steal. You couldn't lie to somebody because they would know you were lying or they would know that you stole from them. And everybody who would be like on their best behavior because it would just be a pure society. You know, there would be no tolerance for lying, stealing, getting over on someone, whatever. So to me, that's like a picture of a society where people are more evolved, you know, we're all psychic beings, we're all feeling beings, we're communicating from the heart space with compassion and empathy for one another. We're helping each other, you know, where it's like a really highly functioning 
um, society. And that might sound utopian, but I believe that we were there once and we've kind of fallen and now we're trying to get back to that space. And it's taking 25,000 years. It's a long time. That's a lot of lives to <laughs> At live. Least. So if, if, you... if you if you believe in the reincarnation aspect of everything, mm-hmm. how often are you reincarnating during those 25,000 years? How often are we reincarnating? Once, twice. And, and in between, do we get to go on vacation to wherever we want to go? Because let's face it, right now, life is kind of difficult. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think it depends who you are. Like, are you an earth soul? Are you an earth angel? Are you a star seed? Um, what, you know, who are you? Like, what is your soul? Because there's all different kinds of beings here. You know, I even believe that there's hybrid beings here who are half human, half other species, and they have their own agendas. Um, so it depends what your mission is and, and what you signed up for. And, and I mean, you can change all of that, right? Like you can be like, okay, I'm going to go to earth and I'm going to help people ascend and I'm going to have a radio talk show and wake people up. Um, and then, you know, you go, you die and you go to your life review and you're like, okay, I don't want to do that again, but I'm going to go help over here in this other way. You know, so I do think that we have choice in between lives. Um, and I think that the human experience of living, you know, 80 to 100 years is pretty short, like in the blip. I think the way that we perceive time is kind of like stretched out here, like a life feels long in a way. But like when you're 69,000 years old, it's just like a blip of time. You know, so time is also like part of it. And it's like a funny, um, it's funny the way we perceive time, I should say, in this lifetime. Well, I know, because I think for every human on this planet, at least the majority of us, we feel ripped off by how short a time we're here. Mm -hmm. I know I do. You know, I, I mean, I look at it that, you know, this year in one month and just over a month, I will be 48 years old. I never thought I'd see myself as a middle-aged man. I still feel like I'm 30. I want to be mm-hmm. 30. I got the great looks of 30. You know, <laughs> yes, you do, Dave. <laughs> no, I do. I, you know, I'm, I'm a solid 5.3 out of 10 and I'm good with that. I, I'm committed to that. But, but the point that I'm getting at is, you know, I mean, that opens up a whole can of worms in the fact that when or if there is reincarnation out there, that we do this quite often. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do we find out more about this considering that, you know, you, you got to keep coming back and, you know, every life is going to be different. You know, like if I were to choose never to come back or come back as a slave or come back as a a battered wife or a a child being trafficked or mm-hmm. kidnapped or uh, I, I w- don't know if I would take that. You know, not right. th- not saying that I, I'm saying, look, uh, you know, if I come back, I'm only going to take the rich lifetimes or the middle class lifetimes. I'm not saying that at all, you know, but I mean, if we're supposed to experience what we're supposed to experience, is it all pre-planned then? I think um, there is a bigger plan at play, but I, I think that um, our realities are being created and they're evolving and shifting as we make decisions like moment to moment, you know? And, um, and I, and when you were talking, I got the thought that like, yeah, our higher selves, you know, cause if you believe that like you have your spirit, right. That's in your body. And then you have your higher self, which is like your connection to God. And it's like your higher wisdom self that, you know, I, we feel them come in once in a while and we, we say really like profound things and we make wise decisions and we're like, Oh, that felt pretty good. You know, like, I don't know how it is for you, but for me, like when my higher self comes in, I'm like, Oh, okay. And you know, so when you, we die and we go back to the review and we're in the presence of God, like we're in our highest selves. And that's when we make those tough decisions of like, 
okay, I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a terrible childhood um, because that negative experience is going to push me. It's going to be the catalyst for, you know, becoming this person in my adult life who helps other people, you know, in, in some way or fashion, because we learn from our experiences. So, you know, I think that humanity is kind of like, um, right now we're going through this time. I mean, we've evolved so much in the last 2000 years, but in a way are some of us are still very like primitive, you know, in the way we behave and some of our, the choices that we make. And I feel like there's some of us on the planet who are like trying to kind of push everyone into being their highest and best selves. And, um, and I think that, you know, it's still going to take some time for that, but I think that, if everyone was acting from their higher self or their God self, you know, we would have much more peace and harmony and love and trust and compassion and like all the good feelings and emotions. And we wouldn't be suffering as much, you know, like we're, we're kind of suffering right now. There's a lot of distrust in the world. You know, people are looking at each other suspiciously like, hey, do you, do, you, do you have coronavirus? Do you have coronavirus? You know, and like, you know, with these masks on, it's becoming harder to read people's faces. And like, I feel like there's this air of distrust in the world. And it's really sad. It kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Um, and so I try to smile at people as much as possible. Uh, even if I am wearing a mask so that I can put them at ease immediately in the world. So I don't know if I answered your question, Dave, but, um, well, we got five, where I'm at. we got five minutes before we got to go to break at the bottom of the hour. Sheree Ariano is our guest tonight on spaced out radio. When we look to ascend on a soul level, how do we get in contact with, with us, our internal selves? Well, I think the best way to do that is to meditate and to go within. Um, you could potentially get hypnotized. You could go through a series of um, hypnosis sessions and try to learn more about your soul's path and why you're here um, and what contracts you, you've made you know, before you came into this lifetime, um, you know, and, but really I think it's about going within and trying to hear your inner voice and your inner guidance and your team and your like connection to God so that you can get really clear on what it is you're doing here and why you want to be here and what, you know, what's the bigger picture plan, like, you know, and ask all those questions that you have. Until you start to connect the dots, you know, and I think that like once you connect the dots and you feel like you're on your path and you're fulfilling your soul's purpose, like everything is just going to flow like divine timing, divine awareness, you know, everything kind of like all these synchronicities start to happen in your life. Okay, let's talk synchronicities because a lot of people don't understand what what that's all about. I mean, is it just more than coincidence? I think so. I think synchronicity is, you know, a beautiful thing. It's like that movie, uh, Dr. Strange, you know, if anyone's seen it, where <laughs> they're moving through the world and the world is moving with them. And, you know, it's like, as we go through life, we create our own reality. And, you know, sometimes we'll like run into a person that we just happen to be talking to the day before you know, is that a coincidence or did you manifest that person? You know, I have a good friend and I can't tell you how many times like Mark will say her name or I'll say her name. And then like an hour later, we'll get a text from her or the next day, you know, it's just constant like confirmation that we're manifesting in real time. So um, I think synchronicities show up in our lives when we look for them when we're open to them, when we believe in the magic of what they really are. Um, you know, 
but there's always going to be skeptics out there who call them coincidences, <laughs> but I don't believe in coincidences. I think um, they're all synchronicities and they're clues. They're like little breadcrumbs that tell us like you're on your path. You're doing the right thing. You made the right choice. You're going the right way. You talk to the right person, you know, like pay attention to those signals, to those clues and those synchronicities because they let you know you're you're on the right path. Okay, so how do we find them? How do we keep our eyes open to see if they are actually happening? What do we oh, need good to do? Good question. That's a great question. Um, so you can do tests, right? Like you can, um, you know, say, for example, I'm going to go on a walk and I'm going to smile at every person before they smile at me. And you'll be surprised. Like people will start to smile and say hello to you before you say hello to them. Or you can like think of a friend who you haven't thought about in a long time and see if that person calls you. You know, for me, I see one, one, one on the clock, like all the time. I mean, it's ridiculous how I don't even like to look at the clock because I, I try not to be tethered to time. But the few times that I do look at the clock, it's usually 11, 11 or one eleven. Um, and those are little signals to me that, <laughs> you know, I'm on the right path for whatever I'm doing in that moment. Um, but you can do little tests like that. You can put out things and go, well, sh if I go left, you know, maybe this will happen. Or if I go right, maybe that'll happen. And just start to, like, pay attention to these little synchronicities. You know, do you get a gut feeling? I can't tell you how many times I would get like a gut feeling about something and then I would ignore it. And then that thing would come to pass. It would come true. And I was like, Oh, I should have listened to my gut, you know? And so now that I have more awareness about my own intuition, which is uh, like clairsentience, you know, I pay attention to those gut feelings and those moments of like, you know, it's like that little voice in your head that goes, you know, <laughs> you need to do that. You know, this is the right answer. You know, blah, blah, blah. And like, listen to that gut and see what happens next time. Wow. Guts don't lie. I'm That's right. I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Cherie Ariano is our guest. Throw a dot com on the end of that. You have her website where you can check out all of her products. The Ascension session on YouTube. <laughs> yes, I will get to it. Check it on out. She's been there, done that. She's all over the place. She's Cherie Ariano. And we're loving tonight's talk on Spaced Out Radio. Stay tuned. All right, we're clear. Okay, cool. Yeah, man. I lost I lost audio, so I couldn't hear you. That's okay. That's okay. What was I going to tell you? Um I can't, I was going to tell you something and now it's gone. Psh. Your, your audience is so um, knowledgeable on essential oils and healing. They're smart. They are very smart. Yeah, they're pretty good people in there. Except for that darn Kira. She's nothing but trouble. <laughs> oh, I love Kira. She's awesome. Her and I met at Soul Tech in Oregon in, what year was that, Kara? Was that 2018? I think it was 2018 at East Eddy Ranch. That was awesome. I haven't met her yet. Oh, she's beautiful. She's not too far from you. Well, closer than I am. She's like 12 hours from me. Oh, yeah. We got a lot You've of... tractor. already well, she's in Oregon, and I know right. that from my old home, it was uh, Portland was about anywhere between it was around seven hours, six seven hours, and then because I'm like another five hours north now, you got to add that to the total, and that's how I know. 
Oh, Sovereign's in the chat room. What's up, Sovereign? Cosmic Wild Man. Yes. He's been wild lately. Oh, there goes my audio again. Hold on. Why is your audio get... messing up? Take off these earbuds. 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 My earbuds are failing. Okay. Say, can you say hello? Hello? Okay. <laughs> Is that audio okay? There's yeah, no yeah. echo. No, you're fine. Okay. Air boots are crapping out on me. Oh my goodness. What kind do you have? Apple Air Pods. I went with the uh, with the Beats. I had a pair of Beats once, and they just like they lasted like five months, and they died. So, but I like these. They work most of the time, but sometimes there's Bluetooth interference. What do I think of East Eddy Ranch? Ooh. It's a magical place. I haven't been yet. I have mixed feelings that I can't talk about on the air. <laughs> but it's awesome. If you've never been, definitely go. Check it out. Sovereign says Cherie is way hotter than her husband. I'm, t <laughs> I'm telling you right now, as hot as Cherie is, her husband is smoking hot. He is smoking hot. Ozzy, Ozzy, oi, oi, how you doing, man? He is. He is, he is a he's, handsome dude. He's hotter than me, Sovereign. Hi, Sarah Dawn Burbank. How are you? Welcome to our chat room. That's a nice letter S you have for your photo. I'm going to assume that st uh, stands for Sarah S. <laughs> Solaire, I love your question. That's awesome. Shouldn't I be granted the right to die when my life is over? What's the point to anything if we keep on living? That's a deep question. Uh, don't even... Let's... For my own anxiety, can we please not go down that road? Because I will have an absolute anxiety attack. <laughs> I'm not going down that road. <laughs> there are certain things I don't like to talk about, and mm -hmm. I, sometimes I scare myself. Is it death? Is death yeah, death? it's all about death. <laughs> okay, we'll keep it in the love and light field. Love and light. Let's sing. What song should we sing? Let's sing a song. Oh boy, you, we don't, you don't want me singing on the air. Everyone will leave the chat room. <laughs> All right. All right. What's that song? Give Peace a Chance. The Beatles song. That's John Lennon and, and Yoko Ono. What's the chorus? Um, da, 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 da. All we are saying. Is it's give Sharia a chance. <laughs> <a> chance. <laughs> All right, we are uh, 15 seconds. Thank you to Cat Chaser and Brett Lewis for the amazing super chats. Yes, Science Bob was formerly CIA. Uh, I don't know where that came up in uh, conversation, but yes, that is true. I'll be back here in a couple seconds. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. I want to remind you that if you've missed portions of this show or others, you can check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button, our website, spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on with Cherie Ariano tonight on The Big Show, and we're talking everything divine, sweet, healing, and crystals. And I'm just learning a lot tonight 
I hope it's sinking in because one of these days I'd like it to stick mentally. But her website, ShereeAriano.com, I suggest you check it out. And the Ascension Sench Sessions on YouTube. Ascension Sessions on YouTube. So make sure you hit that subscribe button there. Sheree, welcome back. Thank you so much, Dave. You are <laughs> Sorry welcome. Sorry about that tongue twister. It is a bit of a tongue it twister. It is. It is, yeah. especially for us Canadians. Well, for everyone, it used to be the Ascension Project, and then I found out that was taken, so I had to rename it the Ascension Sessions, and I kind of liked it better because sessions represent, you know, these ongoing meetings, which is kind of what they are. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. As uh, earlier before the show, I was perusing your website, shariariano.com. Wait, can you roll the R's one time for me tonight? Shari. Ariano. <laughs> Ariano. I love that. <laughs> there we go. Shari Ar. Oh, I just got stuck. Ariano. There we go. All right. Are you happy now? Yes. Thank you. That All was right. good. All right. That was good for me. <laughs> All right. Crystalline light healing. What is that? Wow. Okay. Um, crystalline light healing is a healing modality um, that combines a lot of different uh, healing, other healing modalities. So uh, it was designed by my teacher, Raquel Sacramento, who lives in Portugal. And um, she's been a healer for like 20 plus years. And so it kind of takes into account all these different healing modalities, um, such as sacred geometry, um, journeying, the power of intention, uh, chakra balancing. You know, there's a lot of different um, healing tools that are combined. But basically, it works with the crystalline healing light, which is um, a pure source light energy field that we kind of project onto the body when we do these healing sessions remotely. So um, <clears throat> it's all done. It's It can be done in person or remotely, um, but right now it's a little bit easier to do them remotely, especially with everything that's going on in the world. And um, it's like a holographic mind projection healing and it's all energetic. It's all done through the power of intention. And, you know, my guides work with your guides and they get together and we do the healing together. So it's not just me doing the work. You're actually doing the work with your guides and your divine healers and helpers. But I'm kind of like the facilitator, um, if that makes any sense. And sessions usually last about two hours, typically, anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. So when I'm doing this, am I actually going under or is it just so relaxing that I'm going to be put to sleep? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, it's not going under like hypnosis, but a lot of people do go into such a deep state of relaxation that it's kind of like you're in your subconscious mind. Um, once in a while people will fall asleep. Uh, but you know, they're, they're kind of prone to falling asleep, you know, anytime that they're relaxed. So, um, they still receive the healing, but most people stay conscious, um, because we go on like different journeys together. Like sometimes we'll go to, you know, the secret healing garden, or we'll go, um, you know, to d different things that we'll go to the Akashic Hall of Records, you know, so it's, it can be kind of active through your mind's eye, but it's also very, very relaxing. So a lot of people come out feeling, you know, that deep sense of, uh, relaxation and peace and they feel lighter and they feel, you know, it's different for everyone, but it's usually a very positive experience. When you talk about the, the, um, oh my goodness, you just mentioned it. And all of a sudden my mind went blank. 
the the hall where all the records are uh, you just mentioned mm-hmm. the akashic that's Harvard. the one yeah i'm gonna be honest that confuses the daylights out of me is there really a record of everything in time that that's hidden in some place way way off tucked into the back corner of a closet in the middle of the universe <laughs> You described it kind of like the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. I'm sorry, I'm laughing so much. You just make me laugh, Dave. Um, I mean, it's an etheric place, right? So it's not like a, an actual wardrobe in someone's closet, but it's an etheric place where, you know there's a record of every soul. I mean, I've been told that there's um, a crystal cave somewhere on the planet and there's a crystal for every living person on this planet. And it's like a pre-known predestined number, which blows my mind. It's like, Um, and so if you believe that's true, then the Akashic records make sense because everything is kind of like, predestined right predetermined um and you know i've heard people say that the akashic call of records does not exist too you know there's a lot of different opinions out there um but we have akashic readers we have people who specialize in just reading the akashic records and helping you remember your soul's path or your mission or why you came to earth or what your past lives were and so if the akashic hall of records is false then all of those people are lying so (laughs) i choose to believe that it it is there and that we can gain um access and information from it i wonder if you have any akashic readers in your audience I'm sure we have a few. How do we gain access to this? I mean, do we have our own keys that are, you know, that are out there that we have to find spiritually? Well, some people, um, I believe it is their soul path or soul mission to be an Akashic Realm reader. Uh, So it's very easy for them. Or maybe, you know, they feel really called to do that type of work and then they get trained and then it comes online for them really easily. Um, And for most of us, it's difficult to access these records um, because it's not something we were taught as children. I think if we were taught as children how to do this, it would be easy for all of us to access our own records. Uh, when I take people on a journey there, a lot of them end up getting some kind of message from that experience, you know, like they'll have a vision or they'll get a thought or they'll have, you know, some kind of download like, Oh, this just helped me answer, you know, why my sister is going through this because in a past life, she drowned or whatever the case is, you know, so a lot of times it will help answers, answer people's questions that they can't figure out. So when I take people there in my sessions, you know, it's not like most of them see this big thing and get this big message, but they get some morsel or some piece of information that really unlocks a door for them and helps them understand why they're in a particular um, situation with somebody. Okay, so in order to to try and find out who we are, does that also include our previous lives? Yes and no, because when we come here, we ha- we get amnesia, right? Like we're born into these bodies. We don't remember our past lives. We don't remember our soul's mission. Some of us do. I mean, I've heard these incredible stories of kids who are like five years old, they remember their past lives, they remember their soul's mission, they know exactly why they're here and what they're supposed to do. And that's amazing. And I think more kids would be like that if we weren't programming all of that stuff out of them. Um, But yeah, it's it's a confusing thing because I feel like if we were allowed to remember our past lives and our soul mission straight out of the gate, you know, we'd be on our evolution much sooner. And we'd be 
evolving much more quickly. But because we're starting at ground zero every time we reincarnate or we incarnate, uh, you know, it makes it harder to to access that information. And then we have to go through all the struggles of childhood and teenage years and early adulthood. And then, you know, hopefully we have some experience that kind of wakes us up and we start to seek those answers. You mentioned earlier where I read in your bio and you've mentioned it as well about being a star seed. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for a lot of people out there? It's going to be some hippie reference that makes you not shave your legs and armpits, you know, <laughs> but, but for others out there, and I say that in jest because you and I, we, we, we like to laugh and, mm -hmm. and, and I mean that, you know, on a, on a funny level, but, I mean, for a lot of people out there, when they hear the word starseed, oh, you, you could see the eye rolls, you could feel right. the eye rolls. And, well, so what does it actually mean to be one? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even like talking about it because I know people are rolling their eyes. Um, but so basically a starseed is a soul that um, incarnated on Earth who has had past lives um, on another star nation. So you have a really wise audience and I'm hurt. I'm sure they've all heard of Pleiadians and Andromedans and reptilians and, uh, Syrians. And, um, so star seeds are usually souls that, that come from, uh, another star system. So for example, if you're a Syrian star seed, you have a star family in the Sirius constellation on your home planet. And <clears throat> it is also believed that you have a physical body over there on that planet. And you have your physical body here on this planet. And so when we go to sleep at night, we kind of jump over to the other planet and we go back to our star family and we travel in the astral realms and we do work and we do missions and we get um, our marching orders, basically, from our star family. Um, <clears throat> and then we wake up in the morning and we're back in this body and we do the things that we're supposed to be doing here on Earth. Um, so that's kind of like a definition of a star seed. And what's different about star seeds is that they have a bigger light body. They have huge light bodies. So usually when you walk into a room, like people can feel your energy is different um, because you're not an earth angel or an earth soul. There are souls who are simply earth souls. And, you know, there's different kinds of souls. So that's kind of what's different about star seeds. Um, I also met someone recently who believes that the only star seeds on the planet are either Syrian or Pleiadian. And if anyone else claims to be any other kind of star seed, it's false because only um, Pleiadian and Syrians have dominion over this planet to come here. The jury's still out on that for me. I'm not sure if that's true, but I thought I would mention it because I would love to hear if you've heard anything like that. Um, but I can say that I am a, a Syrian star seed. I've had it confirmed by three different sources. Um, and I'm, my soul is probably about 70,000 years old. <laughs> so, you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> you haven't aged a bit. Okay. So... I get that, and I understand with what you're saying. What about children, then, who are said to be indigo children? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a star seed and an indigo child? Well, indigo children, that's a term that's a human term. Like, humans made up that term. Like, we made up crystal children, you know? Um Probably many of them, if not most or all of them, are starseed children um, because they come in with these gifts that are already online. Um, and that's pretty uh, 
typical of star seeds, but not all, you know, like I'm a star seed that had to have like this terrible childhood so that I could wake up and then want to help other people. And that's also a common storyline for star seeds, actually. Um, <clears throat> like I know another star seed who was an orphan, you know, and now he's helping other star seeds. So there's, there's different paths for us. And I think that that's, you know, something that you predetermine uh, before you come here and, and uh, incarnate. But yeah, I, <laughs> I know that's a far out, a far fetched story, but like you and I have a friend in common who's been on your show and, you know, his, his story was similar, right? Like he went back to his star family on a ship and interacted with them. And then they came here to earth. So like, you know, I've heard other star seeds like talk about their experiences. And that's what kind of gives me um, credibility that, you know, there's more than one person saying this. It's true. But in the end, you have to take usually a person's word for that. Yeah. And I don't know how comfortable that is for a lot of people. Yeah, well, we're all having our own experience, right? You know, we all believe that, you know, like I believe that I took a shower this morning, but that doesn't mean you have to believe that I took a shower this morning. It's like, it's my own experience that I choose to share with you. Um, you know, and that's why like when there's, you have an experiencer, right? Who saw an extraterrestrial, either first contact, second contact, whatever, you know, you, they form experiencer groups because like nobody believes them, but then you get 10 people in a room who all had similar experiences and they start to feel real. They start to feel believable. Um, so it's that kind of thing, you know, our society has been programmed to not believe anything that you can't see with your own eyes or that we weren't taught in school. And, um, that's a big part of the the skepticism and the uh the programming the uh, what's the programming what's it called when you know like the ridicule for like the whole alien thing right like the ridicule ridicule campaign in the 50s was like a real thing you know because they wanted to sweep it all under the rug <clears throat> So to me, this falls in line with that line of thinking of like, okay, you know, what do I have to convince you of to, you know, like you have to convince people that you saw an alien in the forest, you know, <laughs> I have to convince people that I'm a starseed or I don't, you know, it's, it's purely a choice. Okay, but that you know that kind of brings up a good point. I mean, because most of the time, for anybody who's experiencing anything like this, we have no proof. Right. We, we can only go by the experience. We most of us don't have recordings. Most of us don't have videos. Most of us don't have marks on our bodies. You know, so it's very subjective with the wording. And this is where I get a little concerned when you have, like you mentioned the person who said, well, you have to be this or this alien species to be a star seed. None of the other ones are. How do you know? You know, yeah. is that an opinion or is that fact? And too many times in these fields, we keep going off on the opinion stage. So when we have three and a half minutes to go before we go to break at the top of the hour, how do we mm -hmm. decipher truth from someone's opinion? That's that's the quest that <laughs> that I am forever on, Dave, because, you know, unless you're like fully psychic all the time and you're just like 100 percent plugged in, you know, you don't know, like you have to go with your gut. You have to go with your intuition and you have to go with what feels right. And if you lean as a skeptic or you tend to not believe these kind of things, but you're really curious and you're still open, then, you know, do some research, do some digging and try to um, find some other truths because, you know, everything is not at face value, you know? So 
But that's a good question because I'm still sitting with that truth, that reality. Is that person right? Like he was told that by his guides, but that doesn't mean that it's true. That doesn't mean it's the hundred percent truth. So, um, I just keep, keep researching, keep asking, keep asking my guides for confirmation. You know, I, I do that. I'll be like, okay, give me a sign. Give me a synchronicity. Give me a sign to let me know if this is truth or not. And, and believe your gut. But for others out there, I mean, gee whiz, it's, it's hard. It's very hard to to put that trust and faith in somebody's mm -hmm. word who literally is trying to take your soul and define where it should go and where your placement is. Is that just human obfuscation, or is that just somebody who's on an ego trip? Yeah. Or are they telling the truth? Great question. I don't know. It could be all of the above. You know, because I've ha I've asked those same questions like, OK, is this just this person's ego? You know, is is that his experience and his truth? Because that's what his guides told him, you know, like, how did he come upon this information? So, yeah, I think it's, you just have to, like, go with your own truth and what feels right to you. And I know that's kind of like a vague answer and I'm not like giving you a hundred percent answer, but you know, this is all subjective, right? Like we're creating our own realities. So we have to like go within, look within and search for the answers within, like connect to your higher self. Your higher self has the answers. They know like you're all psychic and you guys just need to like go inside and, and, you know, develop a meditation practice so you can start to hear those answers. Hmm. Hmm. Makes you or think. You can, yeah. I mean, because, like, even if you went to a psychic, right, and you asked the psychic, hey, I heard this thing. I want to know if it's true. Well, now it's that person's truth. So <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it's true if they confirm it or deny it. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I just, not trying to sound like a jerk as we go to break here. I just put little faith in someone who is that adamant that they know the answers. Mm -hmm. You know, I could trust that it's an opinion, but it's not the answers. But we got you for another half an hour here on Spaced Out Radio. SheriAriano.com is her website. And next, we're going to test the Magic 8 Ball versus the pendulum <laughs> no Ooh. no no don't make it a test it is a test we'll be back space out radio continues after this versus <laughs> versus all right i'll be right back i'm just going to uh take my dogs out okay okay all right <clears throat>
All right. And uh, let's uh, bring that up. And uh, a good time for me to remind all of you that it's a good time to support one of our sponsors, Mighty Boost Beard Oil. And the reason why is any sale that goes on this week is going to automatically add, or this month is automatically going to add a donation to the BC Parkinson's. Now, Gary the Dutchman, all right, Parkinson's hits home really close to him. And uh, and so he's trying to raise $1,000 to donate. It's almost there. But the Mighty Moose Beard Oil, good for your beard, also good for your hair, when you just massage it in. Ladies, you can use this. It's all natural, no chemicals. Helps prevent split ends. Helps moisturize your hair properly. And look how good it looks. Just massage it in. That's all you got to do. Massage it in. MightyMooseBeard.com. Check it on out. All prices are in Canadian dollars. Gary the Dutchman wants you to use the promo code SOR2019 to make sure that you get your discount courtesy of this show. So check it on out. MightyMooseBeard.com. And a big thank you, once again, to Cat Chaser, to Brett Lewis for the amazing Super Chats tonight. Thank you so much for supporting this show. Thank you to everyone who's hit that subscribe button. Thumbs up, thumbs down, ring that doorbell in order to know when we're going live. And we're going to go live here with Cherie in five seconds. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor here we go with the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight my name is dave scott thank you so much for taking the time to join us we really do appreciate earning your listening ears hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around north america digitally on talk stream live revolution radio and kpnl all of our archives are free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Quackle. Quackle is your password. Use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on Spaced Out Radio. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on Instagram, at Spaced Out Radio Show. We continue on with Cherie Ariano. CherieAriano.com is her website, and we're going to have a little bit of fun here. I should mention her YouTube channel as well, The Ascension Sessions. So you want to hit subscribe on that and check out her videos. Cherie, welcome back. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> All right, we're doing a little test here with all of you tonight. And we'll get the audience in our chat rooms and on Twitter to ask some questions in capital letters, yes, no type questions. And we will see if we're going to put the eight ball, the magic eight ball, up to the task here, along with Cherie, who is going to have a pendulum going. And we want to see about some accuracy here. Accuracy. See if we can get things going. How accurate? Okay, but it's is not a competition. No, Dave. no, it's not a competition. Eight ball's going to win. Um, <laughs> it's the sportsman in you. You can't help it. This is true. This is true. So I, I want to know, you know, before we bring in the pendulum, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have a couple pendulums. I, I know how they work. I find them to be al almost fairly accurate. Yeah. Then again, the Magic 8 Ball, it gets tired after a while. And near the end, it lets you know that it doesn't want to answer any more questions. I've noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's do a little test here with this okay. before the audience questions in the chat rooms come in. Okay. All right. Let's do a little test here. All right. And let's see. Within the next month, will Cherie have e extraterrestrial contact within the next month. 
Oh, Magic 8-Ball. Let's warm this up. My answer is really clear. <laughs> but I won't tell you what it is. You go first. All right. I'm going first. It says my batteries are low. <laughs> That's usually negative. I got a clear yes. <clears throat> Uh-oh. 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 All right. Ross has a question here. Will the Leonid, Leonid, what the hell is this? Leonidians, the Lions race, again visit to repeat their message that they are the Lions of the Divine Galactic Spirit. Okay. <laughs> I have to take a deep breath because you're making me laugh so much. So let me recenter myself. All right. We are centering. Currently okay. centering. All right. Will the Lions come back and say, hey, bubs, we are the ones in control. Look, look at our teeth. Look at our beautiful manes. Intel looks good on my end that they are returning. Yeah, I got a yes, too. Very nice. Okay. That's interesting because I've heard of them as the L Lyran beings. I haven't heard Leondians. Le Leon Indians. That's hard to say. It is very hard to say. It is very difficult. Are these different beings than the Lyrans of the Syrian star system? Sirius B? Just curious. By the way, Dave, we should do a um, like a qualifying question. Like, sure. is it nighttime? Right? All like, right. is it nighttime? Well, that's what I thought the aliens was. Okay. No, that's too, <clears throat> like. All right, <laughs> let's do it. it. Cherie wants to know, is it nighttime here on the west coast of North America? Very good. Signs point to yes. Yeah, I got a yes, too. All right. All right. All right. Now that we're warmed up. <laughs> Let's get to some audience questions here. All right. And <laughs> Grandmaster wants to know, is Cherie in contact with Pleiadians? <laughs> is Cherie in contact with Pleiadians? Magic 8 Ball, your answer is? Reply hazy. Try again. I got a yes. Hmm. Hmm. Hold on. Let me ask the Magic 8 Ball this for a second. <clears throat> Magic 8 Ball, do, do you want to play this game right now? Out of fuel, try later. Oh. <laughs> you Hold can't on. compete with the pendulum. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. We're going to compete now. That's well. basically <laughs> what he's saying, is he can't compete with the pendulum. All right. Now the question is, where did I put mine? <laughs> They're around here somewhere. Oh, my goodness. Now I, got, <clears throat> now I got to look. Now I got to look here. Where did I put mine? That's... Who asked that question about the Pleiadian? That was uh, Grandmaster. Grandmaster. I had indirect contact with them today, in fact. Indirect. I could use Science Bob's beard. I mean, it might have been direct, but to me it was indirect. Like, seriously, where did I put them? You know, I always have my pendulums hanging around. Now you can't it. find any of them. Yeah. You can use a necklace. I don't have one. <laughs> this is honestly so weird. They're usually, like, right here. Oh, well. Uh, Magic game ball, let's... Come on. Come on. You know, be be a hockey player here. Toughen up. Let's make this thing. Can you be a hockey player here for a second, Magic 8-Ball, instead of acting uh, like a soccer player? Let's we figure. could just do pendulum only, but... Intel looks good. Okay. But it's kind of fun to do both. All right. We got her going. Okay. We got her going. All right. Kimberly is asking, will I hear from the person on my mind within the next 60 days? 
can we get like a first letter initial of their name? Levels are positive on my end. I don't need an, an initial because the Magic 8 Ball right. is so much stronger. Well, I got to no, know, but she could have multiple people on her mind. That's why uh, it's nice to be really specific. Mm. Mm. All right. Let us move on here to another question. Let's see here. I want to remind the audience to make sure that you put your questions in capital letters. Let's go to Chris Mo. Will my Carl story, so his own alien story, be of interest to anybody? Ooh, good question. <clears throat> yes. My answer is levels are positive. I got a yes as well. Now, Chris Mo, if you want to tell your your Carl story, get a hold of me. Because I have a new feature on our YouTube channel called True Tales. Mm. And I would love to be able to sh interview you and share that. So that actually works. See? It was true. Instant. Totally instant. Totally instant. Got to be able to do that. Grandmaster is asking, will the gray aliens attack Earth? Okay. Wait, will the who aliens? Did he say specific aliens? No, the gray aliens. The gray aliens, okay. I got out of fuel, try later, which is actually, and I'll take that as a no. I'm getting a Maybe. Once in a while, I get maybe. I'm going with no. Okay. I'm feeling kind of, kind of confident on that one. All right, next one. Nikki is asking, should I write my new book? Magic 8 Ball says, levels are positive. Mm -hmm. Yep, I got a yes. You, you got to do that, Nikki. <clears throat> you got to do that. I am so losing my voice right now. Got to put more oils on. John is asking, <laughs> Magic 8 Ball, will I ever get invited to join Bob and Dave on a spaceship field trip? So in other words, he wants to have an abduction. Will John get aliens? That's what it comes down to. John, are you going to get some aliens here? I'm getting a yes, John. I'm getting a yes. You're going to get some aliens here soon. I'm getting a no. M Magic eight ball Sorry, versus John. a pendulum. Sorry, you, John. You, uh, take the eight ball. I know that's confusing. I know. All right. So let's go to another question. Chris Mo wants to ask, should I talk to my boss about a raise? Not today, Sheriff. Not today. Mm, I got a yes on that one. But it depends how soon. Right. It all depends how soon because mine is saying not today, oh. but it's not. Okay, so let me rephrase not the question. No. Could be tomorrow. In, in the future, should, in the near future, within the next month, should Chris Mo ask for a raise? Magic 8 Ball, do you have a better answer for us? I got a yes. I got a no. All right. You're going to have to figure that one out on your own. Robert Dixon is asking, will my luck change? <laughs> These questions are awesome. Levels are positive on my end, Robert. Levels are positive. Yes. Just got a yes on that one stick too. with the course. Stick with the game plan. D. Swiger is asking... Will we really have full disclosure in June? Will we? This June? I got Intel looks good, but I don't really believe that answer. Mm. I'm getting a clear yes as well. 
Weird. Okay. William wants to know, do the Greys have an evil agenda? It is decidedly so on my end. That's a trick question because you know there's multiple grays, right? Like multiple types of grays. They all have a different agenda. So I would say, do some grays have an evil agenda? Yes. And I got a yes. All right. Let's move on here. Let's see. Grandmaster wants to know, do aliens drink blood? <laughs> Not today, Sheriff. <laughs> I got a no as well. I don't need to drink blood. I have vampires. Brett Lewis is asking. Oh, of course it jumps. Will Dave ever learn to play guitar and set himself free? Because I must rock one day. I must rock. Ooh, I like Kira's question coming up. Censors read no. Thank you, spirit of the eight ball. Also no. No time. No time. That's good. Kira is asking, will Dave have a Sasquatch experience this summer? Ask again later. These questions for me are always hazy. I got to know. <clears throat> I'm going for it. But these are these prediction type questions are tricky because you know, predictions are tricky cuz cuz we're manifesting in real time, so any of these things could change the outcome. Exactly. Exactly. You got to be careful. All right, let's move on to another one here. Zenzabil is asking whether or not he will have relations this decade. <laughs> You're running out of time. It's, you only got two, two and two-thirds years left. Oh, my gosh, Zenzabil. Somebody's got to teach you about, what's that one called? Uh, uh, where you swipe. Um Oh my goodness! What is that one called? I, I um, shows you how much I use dating apps. Uh, sweet it starts with an S, I think. Tinder. 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 T Tinder. That's the one. <laughs> Tinder or plenty of fish or Bumble or or whatever. <clears throat> you can get some relations there pretty quick. Uh, what does this say? Hold on. Come on. Oh, it changed on me, you bastard. It is decidedly so you will have relations this decade. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <clears throat> All right. We need to set some ground rules. Hey, uh, you should see some of the questions I've edited out. <laughs> yeah, please skip the bad ones. <laughs> or not bad, but uh, racy. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um... D. Swiger is asking, am I destined to be a Sasquatch communicator? <laughs> no. Hard no. I'm getting no, too. All right. Jesse, who's got a fantastic beard, by the way. I've been playing guitar for 70 years. Will I ever learn how to play it right? <laughs> oh my goodness I got a yes I got batteries are low mm. so in other words <laughs> it's in your hands whether you want to or not in other words change the batteries in your guitar exactly <laughs> John is asking will Dave ever love me how I love him oh I love you John only when you wear your Stetson hat though Got to keep the Stetson hat on. Out of fuel, try again later. 
John, I'm breaking mm-hmm. your heart. Apparently not. I got a yes. Of course I do, John. Of course I do. All right. Kira is asking, will Cherie have a Sasquatch experience this summer? Hmm. That depends. My sources say no. My sources say no. Getting a maybe. All right. But that one's about me, so it's always like... Maybe. Yeah. All right, Chris Mo wants to know if he will rock a beautiful garden this year. I love gardening, by the way, just so you know. I can't grow vegetables worth anything, though. It's funny, I was talking about myself, and I stopped the ball, and it's like, no. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I got a yes on that. I got a yes to all systems go. Awesome. All right. Kyle wants to know, will we ever have the SOR party in Vegas this year? Mm. Mm, That's a powerful question. Another prediction type question. Mm -hmm. Ask again later. Of course it's going to say that because we can't get across the border due to COVID. (laughs) I got a yes for what it's worth. Uh, I know. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready right now. Hmm. Yes. If, if Soltec, if we go to East SETI, I'll have a Sasquatch experience for sure. Kian um, wants to know, will I ever visit an alien planet? I got batteries low, which is usually negative for, no. Sorry. I got a no as well. Sorry. Sorry, Ken. And let's go. Duke wants to know, is the moon hollow? Mm. Well, it, I have my own opinion, so this is going to be skewed. Skewed. Signs point to yes on my end. Yeah, I'm getting a clear yes. Ooh, that's interesting. Nikki wants to know, will I ever meet Mama? She's talking about a Sasquatch, I believe. In hypersleep. Not for a long time. Not for a long time. I'm getting a no. 416 Bitcoin wants to know, is Bitcoin going to be okay? Yes. <clears throat> Infinitely, yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right. 90K. Bomber, are the stars just holes poked into the top of the mason jar lid? Interesting question. Sensors read no on my end. I'm getting a no as well. All right. We got, um, we got, uh, uh, let's see, time for one more. Robert wants to know, this is a final question before we got to let you go. Robert wants to know, will I ever be able to fully tap into my gift? Mm. Good question. That's a good question. You have my pity on my end. I'm getting a full yes. Maybe it's because it's going to be yes, but it's going to be one of those things that you don't really (laughs) ask for. That's what I think. (laughs) Cherie, we have about 40 seconds here. Tell everybody where they can find you, your website, and your YouTube channel. Yes, please check me out on my website at shereariano.com. And I'm on all the social medias, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Telegram, MeWe, Instagram, Facebook. I already said that. And Twitter. All the links are below in the description. So we don't have to, you don't have to worry about spelling them wrong. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Dave. It was Oh, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And Thank you for not only being a a listener, but a friend as well. And, you know, I really appreciate when you interviewed me on the Ascension Sessions. 
and I'm glad to be able to return the favor with no audio problems. Yay. And we got to get you on the show. Let's, um, let's pick a date. We tomorrow. will. We will. Shri Ariano, everyone. Coming up next, we have the SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day. Stay tuned. Spaced Out Radio continues after this. Good job, Sheree. Thank you. No that problem. Was awesome. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> totally a lot of fun. I knew the questions would be crazy. Totally crazy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me on again and I appreciate making you. me laugh. We always have a lot of laughs. I together. appreciate you. I got to run, get ready for the news. You know. And uh, we will uh, make sure mm. that everything is good to go. Okay? Yes. And did your wife like her bracelet? Loved it. Loved it. Okay. She said to say thank you. Awesome. So glad. All righty. All right, my friend. You take Have care. Have a beautiful night, and we'll talk soon. All right. Take care. Okay. You oh, too. Bye-bye. Bye. That's Sheree, everyone. I'm just getting the news ready here. And All right. <clears throat> All right. Now that my voice is almost gone. Vin's the kind of guy who walks around with an empty cigarette pack in his upper left shoulder rolled up in his T-shirt. Well, thank you, Grandmaster. Hey, Raul, how you doing? Rafaela, you're looking gorgeous tonight. Duke, you're looking stunning.
Thank you to Cat Chaser. Brett Lewis for the awesome super chats. Thank you to everybody who hit rang that bell and hit that subscribe button. Here we go. The final half, half hour of the show. <clears throat> We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate earning your listening ears. I want to remind you that if you miss most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram at Spaced Out Radio Show. Speaking of the news... The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes the ufological. Amazing images have been leaked from a secretive Pentagon investigation of UFOs. The task force has been gathering evidence for a comprehensive report for Congress, which is due in June that includes photographs and videos of UFO encounters with U.S. military assets, including Navy destroyers off the coast of Southern California. Part of the report is to educate other military and intelligence officials about the nature of the UFO mystery. The new images were gathered by the task force and obtained by investigative filmmaker Jeremy Corbell, who confirmed their authenticity. Mystery Wire, who wrote the story, has independently confirmed that the visual materials are included in the briefing presentation prepared by the UAP task force. Now, this also includes a remarkable video that was recorded in July 2019 by naval officers using a night vision device showing what appeared to be a pyramid-shaped object hovering 700 feet above the Navy destroyer. Now, this is an incredible video. The video was taken on deployment from the USS Russell, Corbell said. It shows what they described as vehicles, and they made great distinction. They made sure in this classified briefing that they made a great distinction that is not something that we own either a black project, this is not something of a foreign military, that these were behaving in ways that we did not expect, and that they were, you know, shaped on non-aerodynamically. Like pyramids, these are flying pyramids. The video is one of several forms of visual evidence gathered by the UAP task force to document bizarre encounters reported by the U.S. Navy during the past two years, including photographs of three stationary drones of unknown origin. This is a developing story that will continue, and things like this are going to get exciting right through June 25th when the report is due in front of the U.S. Congress. UFO abductees come in all flavors, shapes, and sizes. Some are highly respected, others are educated, who seem to have impeccable credentials. Some are far more questionable sources. Some come from those who have stories that have seemed to follow some rational internal logic, while others fly right off the charts into the realm of the completely outlandish. Certainly, some reports are way off the meter when it comes to pure, pure bizarreness, and one of those is this time when a farmer says he was whisked away to Mars, the moon, and Venus by aliens. The man's name is Buck Nelson, once pretty much a nobody, born in 1895. He lived on his rural farm in the Ozarks in Missouri, and there wasn't really much that was remarkable about him. That is, until 1954, when one evening would turn his mundane world inside out. On this night, he was out at his farm, when the radio began acting up, changing channels on its own and turning off and on. As he tinkered with the radio, trying to fix it, his dog began barking uncontrollably. Next thing you know, 
there's a light, there's a UFO, a beam comes down, much brighter and hotter than the sun. Didn't hurt him, though, left him paralyzed, unable to move, after which the UFOs moved right off. Yeah, this strange encounter and more. We don't usually do stories like this, but you know what? It's a fun one. It's a fun one. We got to keep our minds open on this UFO tech. These aliens, they could be coming. And you might not think you got aliens, but you got aliens. You never know. So it doesn't matter what career. The one thing I like about that is it, it really discerns the fact that it doesn't matter what career you are. You could be a successful lawyer, successful businessman. You could be a single mom. You could be a single dad. You could have lots of money, no money at all, struggling to get by. The aliens don't care. They're just going to come. They are just going to come. All right, moving on. This is a weird one here. I don't know if you guys follow uh, this story. It just came down. Controversy erupted at the Miss Sri Lanka beauty pageant when a former title holder took the crown off the winner's head and falsely claimed she was a divorcee and therefore ineligible to take part. Pushpika da Silva was named the competition winner to applause and cheers from spectators in the Sri Lankan capital, Colombo. Video footage from the event showed organizers placing the winner's sash around da Silva and the crown on her head. Shortly afterwards, the pageant's 2019 winner and Mrs. World 2020, Caroline Jury, took to the stage and picked up the microphone. I have a small request, she said. As for the Mrs. World, Inc., there's a rule that you'll have to be married and not divorced. So I'm taking my first step, saying that the crown goes to the first runner-up. Jury then turned to a stunned De Silva, forcefully took the crown off her head, and placed it on the first runner-up who broke into tears and thanked the judges as De Silva walked away. The Miss World Series is an internationally beautiful contest for the beauty pageant for married women founded in 1984. The winners of each country's title advanced to the Mrs. World competition to face off against each other. Under the rules of the pageant, contestants must be married as of the date of entry. After the incident, organizers declared De Silva the official winner of the pageant and said in a statement that contestants who were legally married were allowed to compete. De Silva said in a statement posted on Facebook that she was currently separated from her husband for personal reasons, but they were not divorced. If she had been, she would have been ineligible. She would have been removed from the competition at the start. You can see the gloves are dropping off here. This is one mean cockfight in a beauty pageant. In her statement, De Silva described the incident as an insult and decried jury's actions, saying true queens do not snatch other women's crowns. In a second statement posted on Facebook, De Silva's fire continued, adding that she has forgiven those involved. Mrs. World Inc. organizer said in a news release that they are reviewing the incident. We are deeply disturbed and sincerely regret the behavior of our current title holder, Mrs. Caroline Jury, Mrs. World 2020 at the crowning. Statement said, adding that the director of the Mrs. Sri Lanka pageant will be asking Jury to apologize. Let it be known, Miss World Inc. does not sit in moral judgment. The organizer's statement said, if the delegate sent by Mrs. Sri Lanka World to the com compete in the international competition is legally married, she will be accepted. Darn it. Now, many beauty pageants have eligibility rules based on contestants' relationship status. For instance, the Miss USA pageant forbids contestants who are or have been ever married, as well as those who are pregnant or have been given birth to a child already. So single moms according to the eligibility rules for numerous state titles. The rules have been criticized being as outdated, limiting, with some urging organizers to change the guidelines. There have been several instances where a contestant has been disqualified or winners dethroned after organizers found out they had lied about their marriages. Famously, Carolina Duran was forced to hand over her crown after winning Miss Dominican Republic in 2012, with organizers saying she had violated the rules by hiding her marriage and claiming she was single. Oh, the humanity of it all. Humanity. Let's move on. 
Hmm. You'd think the colorful plastic bricks, a.k.a. Lego, are just kids' toys, but you know what? They're actually worth a lot of money. Black markets usually provide those looking for illicit goods a relatively safe trade network, while they can offer those living under repressive regimes a chance to buy basic necessities. Mostly, they're used to sell illegal stuff, like parts of endangered animals. But that's not all you can find in these shady marketplaces. You can also find an assortment of narcotics, weapons, criminal services, and Lego. Yeah, you heard it. Lego. French police authorities are building a case against an international criminal network dealing in stolen Lego. Last June, they caught three Polish citizens, two men and one woman, red-handedly stealing everyone's favorite toy bricks from a toy store in town. The trio confessed that they were part of an expert thief team specialized in stealing Lego. It turns out that there are actually groups that are practically Lego mafias. Entire criminal organizations sim- uh, center around pilfering Lego blocks and selling them through both illegal and legal channels. The criminals come to France, set up a hotel in the Paris region, then set about raiding toy stores before returning to Poland to sell off their haul, explained a French uh, police officer. Next, they'll probably tell us that there's some kind of Lego godfather pulling the strings on this. But who on earth is buying these black market Legos? Kids of actual mafia bosses who are trying to learn the trade. Believe it or not, there's a whole worldwide community of people who invest in or play with Lego blocks or both. Lego has quite a following with the adult fan community. Because of that, there's a huge market for Lego right now, said Chris Malloy, a Lego collector who runs the Brothers Brick website. That market has only gotten bigger over the last year, confirmed another Lego specialist, Gerben Van Ilken. He said it's all due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Damn it, COVID, you're now making Lego part of the black market. Investing in these pieces isn't new, but this niche market has reached new heights with the pandemic. People have more than time at home because of the health restrictions, and the game market has exploded. Now, Lego don't come cheap on the black market. These kits are pretty pricey to begin with, but the Lego group's marketing policies can cause the prices to skyrocket. Lego tends to have products that are available for a couple of years at a time, and then they phase them out, explained Malloy. If you look at the older sets that are no longer in production, they have a collector value on top of their original value. Those can go for thousands of dollars. An example, Malloy named a certain cafe corner Lego set that cost some $150 when it was released in 07. Since its disappearance from the store, it can now reach as much as $2,500 in its original packaging. Of course, it all depends on finding the right buyer. If someone has nostalgia for it because it's a series, maybe they have all the rest of the series, but they're still missing that one, they might be willing to pay more for it. So the places can fluctuate quite a bit. All over Lego. All over Lego. Amazing. After finally living with the world's longest nails for decades, a Texas woman has decided to finally cut them off. Ayanna Williams of Houston broke the Guinness World Record for the longest fingernails in 2017 when they measured nearly 19 feet long. They were measured at longer than 24 feet last week before she cut them off at a dermatology office in Fort Worth. With or without my nails, I will still be the queen, Williams said. According to Guinness, my nails don't make me, I make my nails. Williams needed an electric rotary to get her Wolverine look. According to the report, she had not had her nails cut since the early 1990s. I don't know about you guys. I find that personally a little hideous. I do. I don't know why. It just, mm, that's too long. Too long. A website is offering a remodeling enthusiast $1,000 to watch at least 10 episodes of three different home improvement TV shows in a month and document the experience. Renew Home Warranties, a website dedicated to reviews and comparisons of home warranty providers, say it will pay someone a grand to watch at least 10 episodes of three TV shows dedicated to home improvement projects in a one-month period and compete complete a worksheet from the experience. Do you love a good before and after? 
Do you love home improvement shows? Do they inspire you? Have you spent a weekend binging on your famous or your favorite house flipping show? If so, we got a job for you. Applications being accepted through May 10th, and the winner will have until June 17th to complete the task. You think about $1,000 a month for that in the middle of spring when you could be doing your own work. That's not enough money. That's not enough money at all. No way, man. Not a hope. You got to buck up for things like that. If you want me to spend my money or my time, my time is valuable. But the sad part about it is there will be someone going for it. They always go for it. Police in Cincinnati say they are probing multiple reports of five loose monkeys on the west side of the city, but have not yet confirmed their presence. Residents say they spotted five monkeys swinging from trees in St. Joseph's Cemetery. Oh, there's nothing creepy about that. In the East Prince Hill area Wednesday night, and one witness captured a video that appears to show the animals in trees, but police said the footage is not clear enough to confirm the animals were monkeys. Cincinnati police responded to the cemetery Wednesday, but did not encounter any monkeys at all, the official report says. The Cincinnati Zoo said all of its monkeys are accounted for, but the facility would uh, assist police in searching for the primates if their presence in the city is confirmed. There's not much we can do until we have a confirmed sighting by Cincinnati Police. David Orban, the zoo's director for animal science and strategy, said police say that if there are monkeys on the loose, they likely escape from a private collection, but no one has contacted police to report their exotic primates missing. Police officials said anyone who spots monkeys in Cincinnati should keep a safe distance from the animals and contact the department. And finally tonight, oh, this is a beauty absolute beauty a florida man was arrested after doing very florida man things including humping a tree and running down a street naked yeah 21 year old alonzo sanchez may have been a little drunk or a little high or a major combination of both when he was found by deputies and was seen hugging and hip thrusting a tree no word if there was a knot in that tree He was completely nude and allegedly, oh, here it is, high at the time. Okay, so alcohol is off the list for this one. Before deputies could get to him, though, Florida man ran into the street, was nearly hit by a car that had to swerve to avoid him. When the deputies attempted to arrest Sanchez, they said he was dirty. Yes, arrest Sanchez because they said he was dirty. He punched one of them in the face. A dirty Sanchez type of move. After a brief struggle, he was apprehended and taken to La High Acres Regional Hospital. He faces a battery charge and was booked into the Lee County Jail after his hospital visit. You know, Florida man never, ever disappoints, do they? Never. <laughs> Thought of the Nave happens every night at this time when we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages and read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's Thought of the Nave is as follows. Sorry, I never thought I would drop a Dirty Sanchez on this show, but there you go. There's a first for everything. First for everything. All right, let's get to it. What advice would you give your teenage self if you could? Deep questions here on the thought of the Dave. Uh, Let's go to, let's see, let's start off with Mike. Open your arms to reach others. Open your heart so they can reach you. Oh, that's blissful, Mike. Blissful. All right, moving on. Haunted History BC. Be kinder to yourself. Jen, oh my God, there's not enough room to type it all. There's just so much. Judith, magic goes away in things as soon as you stop believing. Secret machines, otherwise known as Dave. Years go by in the blink of an eye. Don't marry young, live your life, go places, do things. If you have the means or not, pack a bag, go wherever you can afford to go. While you have no dependents, don't buy stuff. See the world, look through travel mags, 
pick a spot, go. I love that advice. Jeff, Merle, total Merle. Merle is an addiction. He needs more Merle in his life. Evan, stick to the dream and don't waver. John, don't think you'll be young forever. Time goes fast. Nikki, for this body, extremely high protein, excessively low carbs, keep exercising, and always, always allow your psychic abilities to grow. Never put a stop to them for anyone. Kara, to every thought, feeling, emotion, and intensity in your body, ask, who does this belong to? Instead of assuming that crap is yours, make yourself wrong and bad, stay in question, not in conclusion. Chris, you can have children without getting married. Richard, save some money and invest in Amazon. And I'm not talking about the rainforest. James, my advice to my teen self would be use intelligence, energy, and integrity as operating platform and know there is a superior life forms and everything else is a lie. Everything. Drew, eat more peyote. Richard, it's easier than it looks. Don't be fooled. 90% of the people don't have a clue what they're doing. They're just good at hiding it. Mike, you never know what someone is going through. Judge less, be kind more. Krista, nothing is ever personal. Jamie, you should have nailed her sister and said. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Jamie. I, I'm i sorry. I, I don't pre-read these. Adriano, stop smoking weed and quit drinking and go to school. Tara has the best one. Love yourself. Thank you to everybody participating in the thought of the Dave. We'll do it all again very, very soon. Thank you to Cherie for coming on. CherieAriano.com is her website. Great show. And to Captain Shirk for bringing us a great Florida man story on the SOR Newswire. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thal rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight on YouTube, LGAP, Spreaker, Revolution Radio, Facebook, the Space Travelers Club, and all the Starkers and Starcats living the dream at hashtag Spaced Out Radio on Twitter. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us, because together, my friends, we own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we've got room for them, too. Good night. Good night.